Morbid curiosity abounds when an A-lister dies. From gory trinkets to ghostly toys, let's take a deep and oh-so-dark dive into things found at celebrity death scenes. Singing superstar Whitney Houston amassed millions of fans the world over with her feel-good hits, including the iconic I Wanna Dance With Somebody and, of course, her cover of I Will Always Love You. Despite her effervescent exterior, Houston struggled with substance misuse, and her tumultuous relationship with Bobby Brown did not help matters. On February 10, 2012, Houston gave her final performance singing Jesus Loves Me at a Grammys party. The world got a last gift in that they got an opportunity to see her perform well one last time. The once-in-a-generation singer was found dead in a bathtub at the Beverly Hills Hilton the next day, aged 48. In photos published by the Daily Mail, it was revealed that there was a hairbrush and a gravy boat filled with olive oil in the bathwater. Houston apparently used the substance to maintain her famously glowing complexion. Moreover, there were numerous prescription drugs at the scene. Houston reportedly took Xanax before performances to ease her anxiety. We lost far too many celebrities in 2022, and Bob Saget was sadly among them. The Full House actor's death was sudden and unexpected. The comedian had performed a set in Florida the night before and appeared to be in good health and high spirits, according to audience members who chatted to E! News. One audience member recalled, Everything seemed great. He absolutely rocked the house, and I think he really felt that. Tragically, Saget was found dead in his hotel room January 9, 2022. It's been determined that he died of a catastrophic brain injury, possibly caused by a fall or accidental knock on the head in the bathroom. The injury likely occurred shortly before Saget went to bed, with the comic falling asleep and never regaining consciousness. According to People, on the hotel nightstand, there were a few necessities, including a cell phone, a pair of glasses, various toiletries, and bottled water. Just months before his death, Saget addressed his mortality on the podcast Till This Day with Radio Rahim, remarking, I guess therapy, having three kids, watching people pass away in the last few years, mortality, all that stuff, has fortunately changed me. A versatile performer who was as much at home playing Truman Capote as he was depicting a vile crank collar in happiness, Philip Seymour Hoffman appeared to be an unassuming man. But behind closed doors, he endured heavy personal struggles, as exemplified by his scene of death. In 2014, the acting world lost another great star when Hoffman died suddenly aged 46. The actor was found dead in his apartment with a needle in his arm, leading to speculation that he may have overdosed. Investigators also found 70 clear envelopes with drugs inside, and other drug paraphernalia, including a burnt spoon. Eight years earlier, Hoffman candidly discussed his past substance misuse in an interview with 60 Minutes, saying, I got sober when I was 22 years old. You panicked. I was 22 and I got panicked for my life. The scene of death painted a particularly tragic portrait, one that he shielded from his loved ones. Indeed, those closest to Hoffman thought he was sober. Hoffman's friend, David Barr Katz, who found his body, told the New York Times, I saw him last week and he was clean and sober, his old self. I really thought this chapter was over. Anna Nicole Smith was always a larger-than-life character. Having wed 88-year-old oil tycoon J. Howard Marshall when she was 25, she parodied her voluptuous persona in 33 and a Third, The Final Insult, and later went on to launch her own reality series. Despite her gregarious demeanor, her life was blighted by tragedy. For many years, she was embroiled in a bitter estate dispute following Marshall's death, with the late billionaire's family asserting that Smith didn't have a right to his fortune. The land's highest court hands her a victory, yet the case is appealed again and again, and the grieving widow never collects a penny. Following the birth of Smith's daughter, Daniel Lynn Burkhead, in 2006, her 20-year-old son from a previous marriage, Daniel, died of an overdose in her hospital room. Less than half a year later, Smith, too, died of an accidental overdose while staying at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. She was 39. At the scene of her death, investigators found prescription drugs and a duffel bag with $8,000 inside. Questions remain as to why Smith was carrying around so much money in her final days. Her psychiatrist Christina Roshevich and boyfriend Howard K. Stern were both found guilty of supplying her with the fatal cocktail of drugs. The death of the People's Princess remains one of the most shocking celebrity deaths in history. On that fateful day in 1997, Princess Diana and her boyfriend, Dodi El Fayed, were both killed in a car crash in Paris while attempting to escape an onslaught of paparazzi photographers. Their chauffeur, Henri Paul, was also killed. 
Lead investigator Martine Monte analyzed the death scene for clues as to what happened to Lady Di in her final moments, according to the documentary Investigating Diana, Death in Paris. Monte explained, We saw signs of breaking, pieces of red light from another car. On the side of the car were traces of paint. I was obsessed with finding things. I even found some tiny pearls. They belonged to the princess. Diana's love of pearls was well known, so the image of them scattered across the scene ripped from her neck is harrowing. But another equally devastating piece of jewelry was found at the scene. As the Daily Mail reported, she was found wearing a Bulgari ring that Al Fayed had gifted her just a couple of days earlier. Recalling the moment he was handed the ring following Diana's death, her butler, Paul Burrell, wrote, I know she was wearing it when she died because there was dry blood among the tiny diamond. The death of grunge icon Kurt Cobain has long spawned conspiracy theories, the most notable being that there was foul play involved in the 27-year-old's untimely death. However, Cobain had a long history of mental health issues and, in fact, suicide attempts. Cobain attempted to end his life in Italy just a month before he died, as noted by Rolling Stone. For many years, he also struggled with substance misuse in part to treat an ongoing stomach issue, which is now believed to have been caused by IBS. Will you guys, like... We, we you and Janet and everybody that I know sit in the front so I can look at you? Because I hate strangers. In 1994, Cobain's body was found in the upstairs greenhouse of his Seattle home. His death was ruled a suicide. Following his death, the Seattle Police Department took photos of the crime scene, but the film remained undeveloped for two decades. In an effort to quell lingering conspiracy theories, the pictures were developed and examined in 2014. As some of the images show, numerous items were found scattered around Cobain's body, including drug paraphernalia which he kept in an old cigar box. There was also a wallet, a woolly trapper hat, and a pair of sunglasses which he had been known to wear together. Chris Farley gained lesions of fans in the 80s and 90s as a breakout star of Saturday Night Live. Along with BFF and future sitcom star David Spade, he also starred in the comedy movies Tommy Boy and Black Sheep. Farley also struggled for many years with substance misuse and mental illness. In his final days, Farley roused the concern of his friends, as his behavior grew increasingly erratic per Entertainment Weekly. It's just going to play out in the corniest way that, any, that even Chris could have told you. Confronted about his notable decline in health, he simply replied, I want to live fast and die young. Farley died on December 18, 1997. On the day he died, Farley had spent the evening with a stripper named Heidi Hauser. According to The Globe, Hauser claimed that after a night of partying together, Farley passed out on the ground and she snapped a photo of him, which she provided to the tabloid. Hauser told the outlet that he was breathing when she left, though he would be found dead later that day by his brother. The 33-year-old's death was ruled a drug overdose. According to Rolling Stone, investigators found Farley wearing nothing but pajama bottoms, with containers of white powder and antidepressants nearby. Isadora Duncan was one of the most revered dancers of her generation and has been dubbed the mother of modern dance. Sadly, her life came to a harrowing and untimely end. In 1927, she was giving her new car a spin when she got into a horrific accident. Duncan was killed after being dragged into the road. When investigators arrived at the scene, they made a grisly discovery. Duncan had a long scarf around her neck, which had become trapped in the wheel of the car, strangling her and breaking her neck. Eerily, she had predicted her death just one day earlier. According to the Los Angeles Times, she said, For the first time, I am writing for money. Now I am frightened that some quick accident might happen. The history of the scarf found at the death scene makes Duncan's end all the more devastating. Amelia Gray, who wrote the book Isadora, a novel, explained to Lenny Letter that Duncan was gifted the garment, described as crimson red and twice her size, shortly before she died. On that fateful and fatal day, she called out to a throng of fans crowded around her, what translated to, Goodbye, my friends, I'm going to glory. She then died right in front of them. The passing of the undisputed King of Pop sent shockwaves across the world. Just weeks away from embarking on a residency at London's O2 Arena in 2009, Michael Jackson looked on the verge of a remarkable comeback to the stage. That would all change, however, when his life was cut short. In the months leading up to the show's scheduled opening, Jackson was struggling with debilitating insomnia. His sleep difficulties reached their pinnacle when he remained mostly awake for 60 days straight. Desperate for a full night's sleep, 
Jackson reportedly begged his physician, Conrad Murray, to prescribe propofol, a drug commonly used as a general anesthetic as opposed to a sleep aid. After being administered propofol and benzodiazepines by Dr. Murray, the King of Pop died on June 25, 2009. Murray was later found guilty of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to jail time. Jackson's death scene is at once haunting and bizarre. The singer was found with an IV drip, numerous tubes of Benequin, a cream commonly used to treat conditions such as vitiligo, from which Jackson suffered, a cardiology book, an oxygen tank, and, strangest of all, a vintage Victorian-style doll. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. 4357.